It's time for another episode of Retro Packages. Haven't had one in a long time, so first up we have a book which is the Amiga Programming Handbook and it's for the 500,000 and 2000 which, uh, yeah, no ECS, no AGA, but this book actually, it's, I bought this used, it's a market and technique book and it shows how to program um, some of the system functions of the Amiga in C and it has a graphics animation system library and um, I have this book as a PDF already and I wanted to have it in writing actually and this is from 87 and uh, yeah it covers pretty much the screen the windows um, input output system messages workbench and has a, an overview of the libraries which in uh, on the Amiga or any platform uh, really you need these libraries to access some of the special um, functions of the Amiga like the blitter or opening a window or opening a screen stuff like that and I plan to write a game engine on the Amiga so I need um, to know which libraries are there for example for the screen which is here and you have a pretty complex set of structures and functions to open the screen and to write to a screen so you can't just say set pixel and it's a pixel um, you have to write one to five bit planes and all that stuff so if you don't know how this works this is complicated if you have some examples it's much easier so I bought this book I think I paid 25 euros which is not cheap for a book but these Amiga books from Mark and Technic and Data Becker actually go for a pretty pretty hefty price so it was 69 D-Mark new which would amount to about the same in euros today so yeah very happy with this book and uh, my game engine is a go then we have the Vortex at once classic which is an AT emulator for the Amiga 500 and 500 plus so it's just a small board which plugs in the socket of the CPU and um, yeah let's take a look and it says 16 bit um, 80 to 86 7.2 megahertz CPU CGA and EGA graphics also um, Hercules Olivetti Toshiba um, and VGA monochrome graphics Windows 3 and protected mode not SI I'm not sure what that was was a sys index system index something like this I don't know and multitasking and it's Vortex Test OK Kickstart 2.0. Yeah, so let's uh, open this up. And this is uh, this looks, looks brand new. So this must be new old stock or something. And it does not look um, that it has ever been used. It comes with the box and all the good stuff. So here's the manual, which is in a variety of languages one two three four five languages we have two discs there's no ms dos with this so have to get this somewhere else i have some toshiba 3.2 ms dos so that might actually work and yeah this is actually i think this is new looks new and i broke the seal I broke the seal uh, we have some thing that looks like an adapter. I assume it's for Gary. I'm not sure. And we have the Vortex itself with, with an AMD 286 8 8 processor. And this plugs into the 6800 socket. And <laughs> believe it or not, this actually is a 6800. So it's just glued or 
sorted in here. Crazy, I, just, I thought this was just a socket and I was wondering where's the CPU. Um, mystery solved, I think. This is crazy. Okay, yeah, so I will make a dedicated video about this, putting this into an Amiga 500 and see how good it actually works as a PC. And I paid 50 euros for this, so I think this that was a good deal because I've never seen one of these before. And uh, yeah, having a PC card inside an A500 is quite the thing. So yeah, I will I will try to combine this with a 25 euro IDE controller and all the stuff in my black Amiga. So this machine will really pack a punch then on the Amiga and the PC side of things. Next up, we have a package from Oliver André, a viewer of the channel who offered, kindly offered after seeing my um, Amiga keyboard to USB adapter project where I reverse engineered it with the full brain power of my brain four wires from a PCB um, to send just these PCBs because he had them. And he sent some other stuff like these really, really cool 3D printed cases um, for these adapters. And this is, I think, the 4000 adapter. So these are not soldered. You have to put the uh, microcontroller here and plug a USB cable into the microcontroller. And then you have an actual USB adapter, which is pretty cool. And I just love the quality of these cases. And he actually does uh, a double print so he first prints the black one, the black case, and then he prints, this is printed, 3D printed into the, into the case. It's not painted or something like this. This is really a print, you can see this. And this, uh, I've never seen this before. It's, it's quite astounding, and I think. And uh, it takes a lot of precision to do this, and he actually wrote me a mail how he does this. And I will copy the mail content in the description of this video so you can read for yourself and maybe do, your, do it yourself. And I have another one of these. Ah, this is for the CDTV. Okay, so this PCB is a bit different, obviously. Yeah, so this PCB, plug and case, which is really, really cool. So thank you very much for all this stuff here. And we will take a quick look what all this stuff here is. We have a C64 Wi-Fi modem to build. And I've never seen this specific one. We have another, I think, C64. Yeah, it's another C64 Wi-Fi modem, which looks much simpler than this one right here. So this just takes some CH340, which I assume is some kind of microcontroller, and this well, it looks a little bit more elaborate and you have to put on some components and stuff. And this is just the PCB and the microcontroller, which is nice. We have a PS2 keyboard adapter. I assume ah, it's for the A500, an A500 PS2 keyboard adapter. Nice. We have what is this uh, wireless boot disk selector for the A500? Oh, that is very cool. And it, this goes into the, or under the CIA, even CIA slot. We have an Open Amiga mouse joystick switcher. Cool, looks like you need some components for this one. Here go the nine uh, pin connectors in here. We have another Commodore 64 joystick adapter, and I assume this one takes USB and gives you 9-pin. Not sure. Have to look it up. And this goes with this, I think. So this is the cover for this, which is pretty cool. Last Ninja cover. We have this here, Amiga PS2 mouse adapter. I think I have one of these. 
And that is just one, I think it's a gal, I'm not quite sure if this is a gal ship or something like this. And we have this fancy piece, which is Amiga 2000 GBS 8200 video adapter. I'm totally unfamiliar with this. I have no idea what this does. This is some kind of flicker fixer, but it seems too simple to be a flicker fixer. So maybe it's just to connect some kind of monitor to the A2000 and you plug this into the graphics extension port of the A2000. I don't know. And we have another Commodore Amiga joystick mouse switcher, which is revision B in this case, or is it the same? No, not the same, is it? Nope. So this is just um, some 74 logic based and this looks Arduino based. And finally we have, what is this? CDTV SCSI. Oh, a CDTV SCSI adapter. So I don't have a CDTV, but good to have this adapter and another reason to buy a CDTV. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Thank you very much, Oliver, for the package. And uh, yeah, I like the stuff and I will do videos when I build these things. Next up, we have this package, shaky table. Uh, it's very, very ugly and dirty. Let me put this to the side somehow. Oh, okay, so it's a pretty nice presentation and it seems to be very good packed. So 25 euros for all the stuff in here. The stuff being ZX81 in okayish condition. We have this, which is whatever. It has some logic on it. Port A, port B. This looks like a joystick adapter for the Spectrum, but the ports have been removed. I assume for other projects. We have this beauty, whatever this may be, LPrint3. Ah, okay, so this is a printer interface. We have this here, which is, looks like another joystick adapter, but it has this fancy grill here. Maybe it has to do with sound. I don't quite recall. We have a back of what appears to be micro drives. We have power supply, which I might or might not use. And it's actually European, so that is good. We have another one of these fancy cards here. Whoa, that looks <laughs> that looks like like war. Who does that and why? Okay, some logic. I assume this is memory. Not sure. Could be. And I think this is a memory adapter. Or memory expansion, rather. We have this here, which is another printer interface. And we have this, which is a ZX micro drive. Nice. Okay. We have this, which is a ZX Interface 1, and I have no idea what it interface. Ah, it does interface actually joystick and what appears to be a video out. Man, what is this stuff? And we have another power supply. I do think for 25 euros this was quite the deal, even if nothing really works, I assume that I can get a tenor for everything and maybe even more for the ZX81. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, would be nice to have this data cable here or the cassette cable, but well, it is what it is. I have a micro drive, so which also has no cable, I think. I did try to um, start up the ZX81, had to make a new power supply or a new connector because the other power supply was putting out 13 point something volts so that was too much for a 9 volt machine 
uh, I had to come up with an uh, antenna cable and set up the TV but to no avail it's dead no signal so I assume this is a dead machine um, we could take a look inside okay only three screws to get into this machine okay two different screw sizes to remember that ah okay yeah, that doesn't look promising it wasn't even plugged in okay what do we have this doesn't look stock looks like some kind of memory expansion or something like this but it has just some ls logic on top so I'm not sure what that means so this does not look like a stock zx81 i have no idea what this is all about so this is the ula this should be the cpu there's quite some soldering to this I assume it has to do with this maybe custom ROM not sure and I have no idea how this is supposed to look like but I'm not going to do anything about this now I think I have no intention of keeping this because I'm not at all interested in this machine okay let's see what's in the final package starting with this which is a C64G seems to be missing all the screws it's pretty dirty since it's already open let's take a peek so all the chips seem to be in place uh, so this is the short board version it's pretty rusty here and it's missing the modulator cover which is not a big deal because we are not going to use this anyway yeah no idea if it works could next up we have this which is a Commodore 64 basic tutorial with the disc and the book and some stuff which I don't want to know what it is this is by Cybex at one point cost 64 dm which is Deutschmark or Deutsche Mark which amounts to about the same in euros right now we have a few more books we have Commodore Star Texter disc I think there's a book somewhere yeah the star texture there was some cybex fan we have geos for the c64 the manual which seems to be the commodore one we have geos 64 2.0 discs four of them we have the 1802 color monitors user users manual 1802 and another one and another one and we have a 1570 71 users manual for the disk drive and the test and demo disk for the 1570 which i don't have yet which is good we have a spanking new box of five and a quarter inch discs 2 hd color black we have the commodore 128 user's manual another box of spanking new 2 HD five and a quarter inch discs a yellowish data set which is called Cobra interesting seems to be okayish don't know what really works I think this is not a Commodore one doesn't say Commodore here and we have another one which does say Commodore so they look the same but I think they are not the same if you turn them over yeah these are same but different this looks to be in really good condition almost has the right color if I clean this up this would be 
very nice data set if it works. We have this, which is a disk box which contains what I assume is a cartridge switcher. So you plug this into your C64, plug in all the cartridges you want and then can just uh, switch them on and off. Uh, the switches are not in the greatest shape. Okay, and a reset switch and some standoffs so that it actually is on the same height as a port. Interesting, this is by Rex Datentechnik Hagen, which is a German company, or was a German company rather. Next we have the MPS 1230 user's manual. We have cables, most notably this one here, which is the 4080 switch. Interesting, so this is for the 128 and you can use this with a composite monitor, I assume. And one plug goes into the 80 column port or the RGB port of the uh, 128 and the other one in the normal video port and then you can switch between these on one monitor. That is quite nice. Then we have the standard monitor ca cable. Oh no, this is Luma Chroma actually. We have, uh, what is this? Not sure what this is. I think it is, yeah, it's kind of a serial cable. Maybe it's a serial adapter so that you can use the IEC port on the C64 with a, or the 128 with a normal serial cable. We have a floppy cable and we have a Geos mouse. We have two more boxes of spanking new HD, 2HD black 5 and a quarter inch discs. Wow, 40 new discs. Not bad, not bad. We have even more books and stuff. C64 PC. Uh -huh. Interesting. So this might be some kind of software to actually transfer data between the PC and the... Ah, uh -huh, I see. So that might be what this cable is for. We have the chapter 7 book for the 128. We have Pro Text for the C128. We have StarTexter Commodore 64. We have miscellaneous Star NL10 printer manuals, a dataset manual for the 1531, which I have plenty of, the 1541 2 manual, and another one. There's a disk inside, I think. No, it's not. It's just this diff paper. Star LC 10 C, which is the color version of the dot matrix printer, and World Cup Football by Commodore, which I assume is a game, Micro Pro Soccer. Ah, okay, seems to be a collection of games. International Soccer, Micro Pro Soccer, Tracksuit Manager. Then we have a 1541-2 with the Commodore 128 CPMs disk. And I assume someone put that in for protection. And it says defect, which is not great. And finally, we have this beauty. Yeah, it says okay. Is very dirty and very like sticky, it has glitter, and it's a piece of art, I would say. It's a C64 and I have no idea if it works. So we have two C64s, one C64G over there, and this C64 too. We have one disk drive, two data sets, lots of books, a mouse, um, and this cartridge switcher for, I think I paid 120 euros, which is, not a great deal, but it could be a good deal. So I'm pretty happy. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go and plug in the C64s and see if they work or if they are future projects and videos for the channel. Okay, first up we have the 
C64G, the LDPC, or ALDI, as we call it in Germany, PC. Um, let's check it out. I have connected the monitor, this Commodore dataset, the one with the Commodore logo. They brought out a game. They stole a million, great classic, played that when I was younger. If you never played it, uh, just do it. It's a great game. Let's see. So we have no light, but we have an image. Let's put in the tape. Oh. Okay, no, no movement, no light. Hmm. So it does get a signal, but it's not moving, which is not good. Now let's try the other one. Switch it on. Yep. And again, nada. So it's either that both of these data sets are dead or that there's no, I think it's 9 volt, or is it 5? No, it's 5 volt on the tape connector. Let's first try a machine that I know works. So let me grab another C64. And let's check the data sets there. Let me put this to the side. So this works. At least it powers on. I can type. Light doesn't come on. Seems to be some kind of crack here. And here is another one, which is my, I call 